Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Pivotal Moments. As I mentioned last week, this whole few episodes that I'm doing now are what I call kind of like my recap episodes. And that is I'm bringing people back who were here from the very beginning, uh, from the first and second season of Pivotal Moments, and just seeing how things have changed from then and, and what Pivotal Moments have have they had from when they first came on the show, which was pretty early in the pandemic. So we know that a lot has changed for many of us. So I definitely wanted to bring them back, especially celebrating that we are on the podcast and all that good stuff. So today I am so excited to have mm -hmm. Alethea back on Pivotal Moments, back in the conversation. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about Alethea. For those who are watching this, definitely click the link to see the first episode uh, when Alethea mm -hmm. came and sat down. And that was our first time meeting each other. But definitely, I am going to read a little bit about Alethea from her website. <laughs> Alethea Gay, affectionately known as Coach E, is a mind-body transformation coach teaching you how to thrive through strength, meditation, and yoga. When Coach E says, I have been where you are, she's talking about being up at 5 a.m., home by 7 a.m., getting her daughter safely to, safely to school by 8, working for eight hours, heading back home, helping her daughter with homework, making dinner, getting ample sleep, and repeating all of the above over again the next day. It's a journey to arrive at the mat, and it takes courage to show up and be present as a coach, she's ready to help you arrive mm. at your mat despite mm. life's challenges. Mm. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sis, welcome thank back you. to Pivotal <laughs> thank you, Moments. Thank you, thank you. It is truly an honor. Yeah, the last time, which was the first time you were on Pivotal Moments, you know, you shared about your journey of really getting started into personal training. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it was a very emotional episode as you shared the, the encouragement you received from watching your mom, who is a two-time cancer yes. survivor, learn from watching her through exercise and changing her diet and things like that. And, and having your own scare, even, with potentially... Um, could have led to cancer and, and, and recognizing the need to make changes. So we were all so encouraged and empowered by you sharing your story on the first episode. Um, but it's, like I mentioned, yes. it's been now almost two years. So talk about what life has been like. Like they say, what yes. a difference two years make because this pandemic has turned into another pivot. And I'm like, well, God, do you have any more pivoting for me to do? Because my tippy toes are getting tired. I'm just, I, I don't know if I can piss. But you know something, it's it's all good. It's all, <laughs> when it's all God, it's all good. And um, in the last two years, yeah. when I say growth mm. mentally and spiritually, I mean, that's, that's an mm. understatement. Um, in terms of my business, some of the challenges I was having when the pandemic first hit was having to fully transition to online training. And I'll tell you, Lita, when it first hit, I had lamps yeah. from like every room in the house. I had them all in the living room. I was taking them out the kids' room. They were like, uh, we can't do our homework. I was like, all right, from so five to six, I just need this lamp because I have to give a class. And... <laughs> But you know what? I was I was pulling from all these sources yeah. and trying to bargain <laughs> and trying to find the least expensive way to provide services. And let me tell you the pivot I had to make or the yeah. transformation I had to to make in terms of my business. I was so afraid of investing in this thing that I supposedly believed in that I was taking mm lamps and I was using $20 mics and this is not to down anyone who doesn't have that larger budget but I had to ch to shift in my way of thinking and realize that this is a business this isn't my small business this is a business it's a service it is a brand and I have if I truly believe in it 
in addition to time, I have to invest in it. And that may sound like to some people like, well, why would you not invest in your business? Aren't you investing in your business when you pay for X and pay for Y, you get clothes to teach fitness and you buy the equipment? I had to invest in quality. My business was the face of how Alethea used to be. I can settle, I can bargain, I can I can take clearance, I'll do it. It's nothing wrong with a sell, but let me tell you something. I had to invest in my business as much as I was investing in myself, the quality of me, the quality of my business is a reflection of my brand. So I had to start putting money where my mouth was. So now I had to pivot and, and now I have the nice camera and, and I have the, the phone and the, the second camera and I have the, the background and it's still at home fitness. It's still at home fitness because I want the, pe the people that I'm here to serve to feel comfortable enough to know that in your space, however, whatever size it is, you can still get it in. You can still find healing in that space. So I still keep it compact and small, but I had to put my money where my mouth was and invest, truly invest, put myself out on the line for Alexander Q. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you see why I had to have my sister girl back on this show. <laughs> I mean, what you just shared about your business representing you. And I love what you said about it representing where you were and, and where you are, right? Because sometimes that's we, we have to have that moment of truth. And we have to look and say, does the business represent where I'm going? where I am now, or even who I once was. And if if it's not moving forward, if it's not representing that that goal that you're trying mm -hmm, to get, mm -hmm. you have to make those changes. You're I, I really same. did. I really did. Um, That's good. Wow. Wow. And Alicia, what would you say, you know, I always like to find out what, what we learn about ourselves, right? Because I think being present and, and, and being in tune with yourself is so key. So in this stage of pivoting, mm. what did you learn about yourself? Well, one of them was similar to what I just said, um, how I truly valued who I was, which was a collection of the services that I was offering as a daughter, as a mom, um, as women, especially as black women, we are expected to serve to the bone. Not everyone can relate to that, but I can. It was an expectation that I would graduate from school and then you send money back to the family. You help the family out. And so I always thought in order to have more, I had to spend less. But I kept spending more and more on things that were not quality. Alethea is, wow. you can't put a tag on me. You cannot put a tag on me. And the services that God has put it into my heart to offer, you really can't put a price tag on that. Because what I'm going for is much deeper. I had to pivot in terms of how I valued all of that. And again, put my money where my mouth is. Now I'm talking to you from the car right now. I'm on my phone. But Lord knows, since that last time, I had to upgrade. I had to upgrade, Lita. I had to. I, I And this, when I say have and had to, it's because within me, I had, I, I wanted to tell myself a different story and show myself that I was truly worth it. I can't sell it to you. I can't sell you those, that, that value on these roots to wellness packages if I don't believe it myself. And I didn't want to keep faking it until I make it. I made it. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. So you mentioned roots to wellness. 
So let's yes. talk a little bit even more about some of, the, because again, like you're saying, you put the work in, you put the investment in, and we are able to actually mm -hmm. see things being born from that work. <laughs> and one of those things, mm -hmm. two really major things that I've seen related to Roots to Wellness, you have mm -hmm. a new book out. Which yes, including two of yours. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a <laughs> what? I'm sorry. What was the name of those two books? I can't. I can't remember. <laughs> Let's see, you are in The Power Resides at the End of I Am, which is being released this month. And you are also in I Can Fix My, which you had a beautiful chapter about exactly what we're talking about, being accountable and, and, and putting your health and wellness mm -hmm. first. And I'm mm -hmm. ever grateful for that. Yes. And now you have your beautiful <laughs> journal which those who are listening, you're missing out because she is showing us the viewers and it is beautiful. So y'all just got to click the link and get it yourself. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So beautiful. So, Alethea, talk a little bit just about what that process was like. Again, I know you had been a part of other publications, but to take that step and say, you know what, I need to now really create this. Just talk a little bit about what that was like for you. What I had to do first was because I had, everyone says you have a book in you. And I had to confront the fact that mm -hmm. I'm very judgmental. And as a yoga instructor, one of the, one of the first mm -hmm. um, lessons in that, in building a practice is to get rid of judgment. I've asked Christians too, but um, I, I, it was never as strongly um, evident to me until I became a yoga instructor and I realized, wow, I really have to release judgment. But in order to release judgment of anyone and anything else, I had to release the judgment of myself. And so I, it took me the longest to create a book. So instead I said, you know something? Roots to Wellness is a program where people become their own nutritionist, their own fitness coach, their own coach. Like I, I can be your partner for the rest of your life, but I would love for you to figure it out and then take that message to someone else. So I created this journal with the idea that people will build and start to tell their own story. And by the time they finish this journal, they will have their own story and their own testimony that they can tell in any way. They can tell it in journal form. It can be a novel. However they want to tell it, they can tell it. But write your own story. So uh. one exercise that I have in here is called tapping in. And the purpose of tapping in mm. was how am, how am I feeling right now and what why am I feeling the way that I'm mm. feeling and then how am I how can I mm. express this to others in terms of what I'm needing right now to be okay and so I'm going to read you something from Martha Beck. And I, mm -hmm. I, I thought this was, it was so on point in terms of what I'm doing. Once you recall the approximate time, your mood mm -hmm. went sour. Notice what felt most upsetting. A comment from your boss, a story on the news, the number on the scale. Be patient with yourself as you search for the precise, as you search for the precise trigger. It's a delicate skill that takes practice. You might want to enlist the help of a therapist, a coach, or a friend, especially at first. But even on your own, tracing bad moods or feelings back in time will eventually help you spot the triggering event. Oftentimes when people come to me, they say, you know what? I want to get rid of this weight. I've been carrying this weight. I lost 30 pounds and now I gained it back. I lost 20 pounds. I gained it back. And you know, life is so busy. And my goal isn't the present in terms of saying, okay, well, yeah, it's the weight. Let's just develop a program for the weight. I want to help you get to the root of it. 
the root of it. Because why do you even think you have a weight problem? My least favorite word is two F words that I, I, it, it, I don't like. One is fat. And when someone comes to me and say, I'm, I'm fat, they're claiming that. They're attaching their I am to that. When did you first realize the meaning of that word? When was that word first presented to you? Let's go back to that. Mm. Because it's not just now you're coming to me and you feel like you're 20 or 30 pounds overweight. When did you start developing these feelings that something had to be wrong with you in the first place? I want to get to the root of that. Because we, we can lose the weight. We can. I can't put you on a fat or rapid fast loss diet. We can come up with this rigorous exercise, exercise program. But if you don't get to the root of why you're there in the first place, it's going to come right back. And you may not, we may not figure it all out in 10 sessions. We may not figure it all out in our lifetime. But at least we can start digging. At least we can start digging, start the work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so exciting. So exciting. And I am so happy that you have just developed. Again, like you said, this is something that you've always been about. I know since I've been working with you, you've mm -hmm. always been about get to the root of it. So the fact that you have now put that into a program and a journal oh my goodness that's just mm -hmm. I, I, so I just congratulate you because that's just amazing and the fact that these are tools that are actually you know I'm, i always love when a person is not just creating a product or a service but actually creating something that can be used for people ultimately right. to kind of not need them anymore right <laughs> so it shows a measure of hopelessness mm -hmm. And shows where your heart is. Like my, your heart is, you truly want to see women thriving and feeling good, and it coming from a good place and a whole place. I love it. Thank you. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. So I know you have some other things coming. Are you allowed to share with okay. in twenty twenty two, or do <laughs> well, we have to I'll wait? I'll tell a couple. So okay. one. <laughs> Right, right. So look, let me look at the list. Okay, I can share that. I'm going to tell her that. Okay. So one is an interview I recently did with Voyage Baltimore. I want to, I really want to take this program worldwide. And it's not about volume, but it's about quality and understanding. And right now I have an understanding of my my general circ circle or my region right but worldwide imagine just coaches from all over the world helping women get to the root of it using everything that we've been told from talking about it to movement to creating events i i want to take this worldwide as you know, I'm working on opening a studio. I have yeah. 13 bikes, and those will also be based on Route to Wellness. Um, yeah, so it's either going to be 2022 or 2023. Yeah. That one is a little further down the list because this program itself is really taking off. I've started in-person trainings again, so mm -hmm. I am training in two states, which is dope because I'm always on the run. Like you see, I'm in the car now. I just drop my daughter off, okay? It's just nothing's conventional. I'm so non-conventional. <laughs> I don't... And yo, I don't try to be like anybody. I don't try to talk, try to act, try to look. Alethea is who she is. Okay. <laughs> Love it, Alethea. She's who she is. But um, the whole, I I mean, so in 2022, again, just expanding this program, expanding the coaches that we have, um, um, you know, you in terms of hiking for hope, taking that to Virginia, um, expanding that, that circle, you and I have a project yes. coming up where we're going to collaborate with other coaches. Yeah. And I don't want to put too much out there in terms of that. So I'll let you reveal that, but yeah. I'm just so excited, you know, collaboration really. <laughs> 
really excites me because you get to touch more people. And sometimes people, when they see you as one man on an island, they may think boring, they may think small. And 2022 is not about thinking small. It's not about playing small. It's telling the world, here I am. And if you're ready or not, I ain't going nowhere. So that's when, and then also making sure everybody gets the journal because you want this. You want this. You want this. You want this. Um, And so, and and that's in a nutshell. And then also um, turning my programs into annual programs because I'm realizing six weeks, eight weeks, it's not enough. It's not enough. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Well, sis, for again, congratulations. I am so glad that we met, we connected. Yes. You are my sister for life. I'm just rooting for you. And I know you continue to root for me. And I'm mm. telling y'all, like, it is so refreshing to have friends like Alethea, where, <laughs> first of all, they're dope. <laughs> they're, you know, c- continuing to raise the bar so that um, you not only have something to continue striving for, but they turn around, reach their hand out and help pull you up. And y'all just work together to get, <laughs> make sure everybody's nice. eating, <laughs> make sure everybody's winning. So I just salute you and I honor you. And I've just, it's just such a privilege to know you and be wow. friends. I could go on and on and on <laughs> and make this real awkward. But <laughs> They don't know about the late night texting conversations. They don't know. But they, they know really it's don't. like hopefully to have someone they like really that in don't. their corner. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful thing. And I'm just so thankful. I must share before I wrap up, I have to share just so that those listening, watching, understand what true beautiful relationships mm. can exist among women, among black women. We talk I about the time. You know, I was going through a situation. Yes, and I will never forget, Alethea, you saw, you heard in my voice, we were on a, a mutual call for something we were working on together. You heard in my voice the distress. When we got off the phone within five minutes, you called me and it, it seemed like it was like 10 minutes where you just let me sob. And when I tell y'all like I was sobbing from a from a painful place, and this girl just sat on the phone with me and let me release and was there letting me know she had my back. Mm-hmm. Like I get emotional when I think about it because that's that's just truth right there. Like that, you, it's just, I don't even know the words for it, but it's just, so, it's so beautiful. And I so appreciate you being that type of woman and reminding mm-hmm. me to be that type of women, woman for other women. Yeah, I, gonna make I, me cry. so much. <laughs> Well, I will let you go because, like I said, we could go on and on and on. But thank you again. And all the information for Alethea is there on the screen for the viewers um, in the show notes if you're listening. Um, But definitely make sure to check Alethea out. Get that journal. Follow everything that she's doing, the motivational posts, all of that. Amen. Let's let's do it. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Thank you, sis. Yes. I'm honored. Thank you yes. so much for this. Yes. Thank you. You're so welcome. And thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Pivotal Moments. As always, I appreciate your support, your continued support. And we will see you next time on Pivotal Moments.